I heard you liked lenses, so we got a lens to put on your lens. So about a week ago, I'm browsing Amazon as one does, and it takes me for an absolute ride. I find this wide angle lens adapter for the kit lens on Sony APS-C cameras. It is only $40, and what it promises is a 75% zoom out. And guess what? I'm using it right now. I normally use studio grade lenses on my desk setup when I'm recording videos. Like this camera is normally my Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter. And this camera is normally my Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. But I bet you didn't notice that I was using a different lens than normal. And that's why I'm making this video. What you're seeing right now is the Sony kit lens for its APS-C cameras. Those cameras being like the Sony ZV-E10, the Sony A6000, or Sony A6600. That line and family of cameras. I'm using the kit lens with a wide angle adapter. This is without the adapter. This little dude right here is a wide angle lens adapter by Neewer. So here's just a quick without the adapter with the adapter. That's a lot wider. It goes from 16 millimeters to 12 millimeters. And you just screw it onto your lens. This little lens adapter is $49.99 on Amazon, though it has a 20% off coupon. I don't know how long that'll be available. So I bought mine for about $40. I really like the tininess about it all because it doesn't add any noticeable weight when you're holding your camera. And on top of that, seeing as the kit lens is mechanical, seeing as it extends outward like so, you really need something very lightweight if you're gonna use it as an attachment to the lens because you don't want to mess with the mechanics of the lens with excess weight. When you attach the adjustment to your kit lens, I recommend turning your lens off so that you don't mess with the mechanics by tugging or twisting where you shouldn't. It is a bit hard matching the threading exactly, but you just put it towards the middle of your kit lens. See the inside of this ring? Get it straight and aligned and then just twist it in like so. When the camera is off, it does look a little silly, just like there's a little protrusion on the lens. But when you turn it on, it looks like just another layer of the mechanical part of the lens. So like you start with the base and then it extends out and then this lens looks like just a third extension. In practice, I really don't mind how this lens looks and it is pretty easy to put on, though it is a bit tedious getting the exact right twisting. It is easier to literally just remove the lens and put on a different lens than it is to twist the attachment on and off, but it's less to carry around, it's compact, it's not that big a deal. However, if you are in a setting where you need to rapidly change lenses, I might not recommend that you use this, but if you're in a setting where you rapidly need to change lenses, you probably are using a more professional lens setup. And honestly, I do really like how this lens ends up looking while you have it used while the camera is turned on and the kit lens is mechanically extended. Extended. I very rarely use Sony's kit lens when I record my videos because I typically do so in a studio-esque setting where my cameras are like static on tripods on my desk. However, when I'm out and about, I do really, really like how portable the Sony kit lens is. However, while vlogging, I do find it's a little bit narrow. This is especially noticeable when you're filming in 4K 30 and then there's an additional 1.5X crop. So for an APS-C camera like the Sony a6600, a 16 millimeter focal length for an APS-C camera is an effective 24 millimeter focal length for a full frame camera. Then when you shoot at 4K 30, almost all of Sony's APS-C cameras add an additional 1.5X crop or something thereabouts. This brings you up to a 36 millimeter effective focal length at its widest. That is a little bit narrow for vlogging. The newer lens that I'm using advertises a 0.75X adjustment factor to your focal length. The Sony kit lens at its widest is 16 millimeters. After using this lens, it turns into 12 millimeters, which is the full frame equivalent of 18 millimeters. So very firmly in the wide angle family. When you apply that 4K crop, it also becomes an effective 27 millimeters. 12 times 1.5 is 18. 18 times 1.5 is 27. This adapter on its Amazon page also advertises working for the Sony ZV-1F. I don't own that, so I can't verify it, but the ZV-1F, I believe, has an effective focal length of 20 millimeters, so this would put it at 15 millimeters. But will this work for vlogging? Let's run some comparisons. I took my A6600, the kit lens, and the adapter out while I was hiking this morning. We'll compare shots with and without the newer lens adapter in multiple scenarios. First, holding the camera handheld, holding the camera with a Gorillapod as extension, and then both those scenarios with and without the 4K 30 crop. We'll also compare some photos. My DoorDash just arrived, oops. <laughs> 
I very rarely order using delivery apps because it's expensive and I'd rather give my money direct to the restaurants. But I was reading a book called like how to keep house while the ship is sinking or something like that about like executive dysfunction, which is something that I often struggle with as it pertains to productivity. And I was like, OK, I'll try to film this video while I'm waiting for the food to arrive. And then the food arrived like 20 minutes early. So like. It messed with my plans. <laughs> the whole idea is that you order from DoorDash and the time you would spend cooking, you work on something that you've been working on because it gives you a set end time. But the set end time came early. Okay, whatever. Anyways, so right now we are in Lightroom. Gosh, I have to put the DoorDash on my desk because my cats were messing with it. <laughs> this first shot is of my friend Ron with the kit lens, no adapter for wide angle. So you can see his full body fits into the shot and about maybe 8% on the top and bottom are empty spaces. Space not fitting him. With a wide angle lens adjuster, you can see there's much more empty space below him and about the same above him, just with how I framed the shot. I wasn't super scientific with how I did it, but I did take some comparative shots for reference points. So as you can see, Ron takes up maybe a third of the screen, whereas on the other shot, he takes up about half of the screen. 75% of one half is 37.5. So that checks out, the math checks out. Still on the kit lens shot, let's check a little bit for detail, sharpness, stuff like that. Let's zoom in onto this woodwork. So as you can see, you can see a fairly decent amount of detail on the wood. It's not amazing. I didn't have the most steady hand. You can fairly clearly see some footprints, some debris on the ground, some little flowers here. Um, let's compare that with the wide angle lens adapter. So let's just roughly reframe that. As you can see, the wood is a little bit less sharp. The flowers are also a little bit less sharp, but as it relates to the whole image, uh, this is very imperceptible. Unless you zoomed in on this, you wouldn't really notice it. If you're using kit lens, you're probably not using it because it is the most sharp, high fidelity lens that you own. You're using it because it is cheap, has a pretty decent focal length, and is compact. I don't see this as too much of an issue when it comes to being a bit less sharp because chances are the kit lens is just not that sharp in the first place. Though the kit lens is significantly sharper on like the background non-focus things. And if we're just looking at, for example, the detail on, let's look at Ron's hair. So this is on the kit lens alone. This is on the wide angle adjuster. They're both a little bit out of focus, but that again was because I didn't center his face in the shot. His shot is on the outside and with any wide angle lens, even 16 millimeters, the outside tends to have a little bit less detail and a bit more distortion. This is without the adapter and I'm seeing a bit of chromatic aberration on his hair. And with the adapter, there's still a bit of chromatic aberration. I feel very smart using terms like this. Next, let's compare two shots of this sign that says area closed. This is without the adapter. If you zoom in, let's just zoom out a little bit there. If you zoom in, you can see it's fairly clear. You can see a lot of the details on the text. Um, you can see like the rust and stuff. You can see the plants in fairly clear detail. I believe the shot is like an F5, so there's not too much background blur, so it is pretty decent for evaluating the total sharpness. The details on the wood are fairly clear. There's nothing wrong with this image. So then if we go to the wider shot, so here we're using the lens adapter. The details on the text right here are a little bit less sharp. So if you look here, if you look on the A a bit blurry, just check for the pixelation and the overall sharpness on like this little bit of rust right here. And let's switch back. This is significantly sharper on the text. So so again, adapter, no adapter, adapter, no adapter. It's not exactly the same shot. And again, this was a handheld shot, so it, I could just have been a little bit shaky. I'm not that shaky when I shoot photos, especially when the camera is so light using the kit lens. But the point is that the wide angle adapter did add a bit of blurriness or less sharpness to the shot. Like here's without the adapter. Again, this is very zoomed in, so it's not the most amazing detail. Um, you can see a fair amount of detail on these uh, wheat or plant stalks right here. And then if you switch to the wide angle adapter, you can still see a fair amount of detail, but it's just a little bit blurrier. And if you like zoom in even further, you can see a fair bit of chromatic aberration, which on the original one, um, there's still some chromatic aberration in the same spots. Like you can see the purples right here where there is no purple. Chromatic aberration seems to be more of a problem with the kit lens rather than the adapter. The main thing to note is that the adapter is significantly less sharp. However, like when you consider that when you're using a wide angle lens adapter, chances are you're not zooming in to the image. If you 
using it for video, chances are you're using it wide, fully zoomed out, and it's not going to be very noticeable. And if you're comparing a $40 lens adapter compared to buying like a $650 wide angle lens, I've done that. This is like a bit of a no brainer if you just need a slightly wider angle sometimes while you're vlogging. If you're using the kit lens while traveling, kit lens for just vlogging in general, throw on the wide angle adapter and it seems like it's pretty solid at least for the price of 40 to $50. It is $50, but there's a 20% coupon that I used when I bought it, so I got it for 40. You can see my you can see my DoorDash right here. <laughs> I got boba. If you bought an APS-C camera because it's cheaper than a full frame, chances are you don't want a six, $700 lens just to have wide angle shots. In that case, this adapter, the one that you're looking at me through right here, could be right for you. Similarly, if you bought an APS-C camera for the compactness, the kit lens with the adapter is significantly lighter and more compact than my Tamron 11 to 20 wide angle lens. This thing is chunky. It's like half the length of the Gorilla pod and like twice the girth. It is a big, big lens. The Tamron is like the size of a full frame lens, but for an APS-C camera. The Tamron lenses have some of the best quality of any glass that I've ever used. They're just really big and really heavy. But how else are you going to get f2.8 on a zoom lens? Big and heavy. I will say I probably would not use this setup for like a professional video shoot, but for a casual vlog, for a YouTube video, absolutely. I view this most as a fantastic value add if you already have the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens for the Sony a6600, ZV-E10, etc. I mean, you're watching me use this lens right now. I'm quite impressed with it. I'll throw on some footage of me using the Tamron to compare this with. I'll just do back and forth while I'm talking right here. As you can see, the Tamron is significantly sharper, has a lot more background blur, but as it relates to just like a whole picture lens, if you're just like glazing your eyes and looking at the overall picture, it's about the same. And yes, the details do matter a lot, especially in photography and like client work, but for vlogging, especially if you're like outdoor vlogging casually, this is perfect. And this also means you're bringing a lot less valuable stuff that could get stolen when you travel. If you're using a $100 kit lens and a $40 adapter, that's way less risk than carrying around a $700 lens for wide angle, another $700 lens for like regular photography. So, and then on top of that, your expensive camera body. So I am a fan of this newer wide angle lens adapter. It's definitely not perfect. It does add a bit of blurriness. It's not particularly sharp, but as a value add for your kit lens, I think it is a great option. Let me know what you think in the comments. For more oddly specific wide angle lens comparisons, you should watch my video reviewing the ZV-1 in 2023. I cover the default focal length for the ZV-1 as well as the wide angle lens adapter, also by Neewer. If you're trying to find your best compact, budget-friendly vlogging setup, this video and that one will be great resources for you. Thank you to my patrons, especially my $5 tier patron Joshua. You can help support my educational content on Patreon.com slash Andy Cormier for as little as $1 a month. Every bit helps. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Happy creating.